morning, everybody. I'm Yasu Ekine of LC. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the, the emergence of chemical diversity or diversity in the chemistry of the ocean world in the solar system. So Earth is a habitable planet that holds liquid water on the surface and can support life. For centuries, people have been wondering if there are any other habitable planets in the solar system and beyond. So until now, the spacecraft ex exploration has revealed the presence of liquid water on the surface of early moors, as well as the interiors of some geologically active icy satellites around the gas giants. So now we have multiple ocean worlds in the solar system. However, when it, when it comes to Mono, we start to recognize there is a wide variety in the chemistry or chemosphere of the ocean world in the solar system. For example, the Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's moon Enceladus have physically similar subsurface ocean beneath the thick icy crust. However, this uh, water chemistry would be totally different. The recently Cassini spacecraft have collected the plume materials, geyser materials, erupting from the subsurface ocean of Saturn's moon Enceladus. And according to the observational result, the subsurface ocean of Enceladus contains a high degrees of carbonate, hydrogen, ammonia, methane, and some organic materials, suggesting a very reducing and alkaline ocean. On the other hand, the presence of very oxidizing salts, uh, such as sulfuric acid, on the surface of Jupiter's moon Europa suggests a more oxidizing and more acidic water uh, within Europa than that of Enceladus. So these observations are really amazing. But uh, the key question is, what caused this chemical dichotomy between these two icy moons? Not only on the icy satellite, but also on the terrestrial planet, the water chemistry would have evolved over time. The most famous example of the planet that experienced a dramatic change in the water chemistry is our planet, Earth. The atmosphere of, and the ocean of Earth has shifted from anoxic to oxidizing at around 2.3 billion years ago, which is called the Great Oxidation Event, or GOE. The Mars is recently believed to be believed to have experienced a very similar chemical shift from uh, reducing a neutral, neutral pH to oxidizing an acidic pH on the for the surface water at around 3.5 billion years ago. However, we still don't know what was the driving force for the evolution of water chemistry or chemosphere on the planet or satellites. So in my talk, I'd like to focus on the what are the key processes for making the diversity of water chemistry or chemosphere developed on the planet or satellite, uh, especially in the ocean worlds in the solar system. But why should we think about chemistry? Yeah, some astronomical physics or astrophysics people do not care about the chemistry, but uh, I really love chemistry. I believe that this may be because the diversity of water chemistry or diversity of chemosphere possibly could determine the diversity of biospheres or diversity of life. So if we want to know or predict the, the, the uh, biosphere or life beyond the Earth, we first should understand the some key geological or geochemical processes for making the diversity of chemosphere. So in my talk, I'd like to focus on these two moons, Jupiter's Europa, very oxidizing, and uh, uh, Saturn's moon and Solis, which contain a lot of organic materials. So one planetary scientist may say that, yeah, we should go to answer this to, for, to look for life. And another planetary scientist may say, oh, we should go to Europa. So yeah, everybody may confuse it or wondering which is the real best place for looking for words. So in a matter of speaking, my talk is something like a <laughs> two round fight, a two round fight between Europa guide and the Enceladus guy to determine which is the best place 
to look for life in the solar system. In round one, I focus on the availability of essential elements on these two moons. And in second two, around two, I want to compare the chemical disequilibrium energy on these IC satellites. So if we first try to understand the availability of element, uh, essential elements, we first should think about the building materials of these IC moons. So in uh, my first topic, relates about the formation process of the gas planet system. So the regular IC satellites, including the Europa and Enceladus, are considered to be byproduct of gas giant formation within the circumplanetary subdisk of gas and ice solid embedded in the protoplanetary disk around the uh, protosun. So the building materials of these icy moons are considered to be largely affected by the creation process of gas giants. So this movie shows the uh, calculation result of my colleague, uh, by my colleague, which shows the inflow of gas and ice solid onto a subdisk with uh, Jupiter-sized mass planet uh, using the three-dimensional hydrodynamic modeling. So you can see the creation of materials occurred almost vertically toward the subdisk from high altitude of the surrounding protoplanetary disk. And importantly, the gas and the ice solid get high velocity upon the creation and possibly get experience a shock heating on the surface of subdisk. So this it's just a theoretical calculation. However, the recent ground-based uh, telescopes directly observe the creating gas giant around the protosun, a protostar in the, uh, beyond the solar system. So this color of the images show the uh, mission of H alpha in the visible and the missions in the KS and L band in the infrared around the Lake Colosseum 15, which is the uh, Protostar having two gas giants uh, in a protoplanetary disk. So the emission of the atomic hydrogen strongly suggests that the accreting gas gets very high temperature, let's say higher than 10,000 Kelvin upon the pouring onto the gas giant and their subdisks. Also, the masses of these gas giants are considered to be several times that of Jupiter. However, the similar shock heating might have occurred on Pot Jupiter and Pot Saturn in the early solar system. So, in the present study, uh, graduate student Yushiko and I simulate the chemical reaction upon gas accretion onto the Pot Jupiter and the Pot Saturn in the early solar system. So, this figure shows the schematic diagram of the materials inflow onto the second planetary subdisk. The disk condition and the infrodynamics are calculated using the three-dimensional hydrodynamic model, which I showed in the previous slide. And the shock heating and the chemical reaction in the streamline are calculated using the one-dimensional shock tube model, uh, accompanying with the kinetics of the gas phase reaction based on the combustion chemistry. So this figure shows the uh, maximum shock temperature of accreting materials onto plot Jupiter and plot Saturn as a function of distance, radial distance from the central gas planet, normalized by planetary radius. According to these previous studies, the, the gas and ice solid mainly falls uh, within a few tens of planetary radius. So in this inflow region, the gas uh, shock temperature for Jupiter becomes 10,000 Kelvin, whereas those for Saturn becomes only a few thousand Kelvin. The difference in the shock temperature is simply because the mass of Jupiter is three to four times that of Saturn. So the velocity of importing materials is almost same as the free, free fall velocity from the high altitude of the surrounding uh, protoplanetary disk. So a more massive planet, planet results in the higher shock heating during the collision. So this figure shows the uh, show typical calculation result of time uh, evolution of carbon and the nitrogen bearing species after shock onto, uh, uh, in the accretion onto a Jupiter. 
So the high temperature sustain, uh, high temperature, let's say 10,000 Kelvin sustain almost one second, and the temperature decreases gradually uh, through the time. But as for the uh, initial composition, we consider a mixture of gas and the ice uh, component. The gas consists of hydrogen and helium. The ice composition is same as that of comet. So you can see the initial CO2, ammonia, and the methane dissociate and convert it into more stable CO and N2 during the high temperature period. On the other hand, the, uh, this is a result for the accretion in the Saturn. So these gas molecules can survive upon the shock. So this is because the shock temperature for Saturn is only a few thousand Kelvin. So these gas molecules are uh, dissociate only incompletely. So this figure compares the kinetics in, uh, uh, during the accretion onto the protostrupid and the protostatin. So after the shock, these gas species are provided into the subdisk and spread inward and outward, forming the subdisk. So in this cold, low temperature subdisk, the some gas species uh, could condensate and incorporate it into the building materials of IC satellites. However, in the Jovian system, the produced uh, nitrogen and the CO cannot condensate because their condensation temperature is extremely low in the subdisk condition. On the other hand, in the Saturnian system, the survived CO, ammonia, and methane can be trapped in ice component because of their high condensation temperature. So in the Saturnian disk, the primordial carbon and nitrogen bearing species, possibly including the organic species such as alcohol, cyanide, and aldehyde, could survive upon accretion. However, that cannot for uh, Job Jovian satellites. So we suggest that a uh, mass of planet is a critical factor to determine the chemical dichotomy between the Jupiter and Saturn. For the Saturnian system, ammonia, CO2, methane, and possibly other organic material, organic rich materials can survive upon the creation and incorporate it in the building material, materials of IC satellites. So these are consistent with the findings of these molecules within the Enceladus subsurface ocean, and also the carbon and nitrogen-rich nitrogen atmosphere on Titan. The Titan nitrogen originates from ammonia. So the Saturnian satellites could possess abundance of essential elements for life. On the other hand, the, for the Jovian system, nitrogen and carbon bearing species are highly depleted in the building material, materials of IC satellites. So those are possibly consistent with the no atmosphere of these large icy moons. So this is a probably first and the most simplest explanation to uh, for the uh, dichotomy between these icy moons. So to, co to summarize my first part, I mean, let's say, of round one talk, the, a planet Mars determine the availability of essential element, also the chemical composition, building materials about IC satellites. And we suggest that about 0.5 Jupiter Mars would be a threshold to determine the dichotomy. So next, I'd like to turn to uh, round two. So the life requires energy. So in this rigors, a habitable planet can be defined as a planetary system which continuously provide this equilibrium chemical energy to uh, hydrosphere or biosphere. So it was generally hypothesized that on the surface of icy satellites or icy planetary bodies, the photochemistry and ion chemistry could dissociate the surface materials, including the uh, water, ice, uh, water ice, and forming the hydrogen and the oxygen. And subsequent escape of hydrogen on the surface should result in the formation of oxidant on the surface of icy moons. On the other hand, in a deep sea floor, hydrothermal water rock reaction could produce the reductant and the metallic ion uh, and provide these elements into the ocean. And hydrological cycles within the ocean and icy crust could transfer 
and mix these chemicals and generates the chemical disequilibrium energy in the hydrosphere. So this was just a hypothetical scenario or hypothetical view. However, the recent ground-based observation also confirmed this view on the surface of Europa. So these are the uh, elemental concentration map on the surface of Europa observed by the large telescopes, the Keck 2 telescopes. Then you can see the accumulation of uh, sulfuric acid uh, oxidant, highly oxidative oxidant on, on the surface of trailing hemisphere of Europa. So these oxidants are considered to be produced by the chemical reaction between the water ice and the sulfur induced by high energy particle irradiation uh, accelerated by Jupiter's strong magnet sphere. The sulfur is imprinted from the inner uh, uh, Galilean satellite, Io. So considering the surface recycling, the, these oxidants on the surface, uh, namely sulfate, must have been supplied into the ocean at the high flux, and sulfate should be the major anion and the major oxidant in Europa's ocean. The large telescope's observation also suggests the presence of uh, sodium chlorine in the geologically active, very young region in the, in the reading hemisphere. This implies that the sodium and chlorine may be the major component. So chlorine may be, may be the major anion in Europa's ocean, not sulfate. So this seems to be contradicted with the, the simplest uh, prediction of the accumulation of sulfate in the ocean. So this observation raises some primary question on the material cycle within the Europa. For example, where did this sulfate go in Europa's ocean? And what process is responsible for a sink of sulfate? A possible sink of the sulfate within Europa's ocean includes the hydrothermal activity, hydrothermal reaction on the seafloor. Uh, namely, the hydrothermal sulfate reduction, in which sulfate is reduced by hydrogen formed by the water of reaction, forming a sulfide on the seafloor. However, the experimental data for this reaction are obtained only under low pressure condition, comparable to Earth's seafloor condition. So, which is uh, only one tenth of Europa's pressure condition. So how effective does the sulfate reduction proceed under Europa's condition? And what would be the pH and the rock composition suitable for the sulfate reduction? These question remains unsolved due to a lack of laboratory experiments. So here uh, we perform, I mean, the, my student Shuya, Shuya is here as a volunteer, and uh, <laughs> I performed Oh, maybe he, he should explain these parts. <laughs> maybe more, I mean, yeah, familiar with this part. But yeah, I, I will explain. Yeah, OK. And uh, yeah, we, we performed the hydrothermal experiment of sulfate reduction uh, simulate, to simulate the hydrothermal reaction possibly occurred in Europe's seafloor. So to this end, we uh, developed new hydrothermal portal system uh, in which we can pressurize the high temperature water and rock components uh, to comparable to you, Europa's pressure conditions. And by pressurizing the flexible gold tube reaction cell uh, within the autoclave, we can collect fluid samples uh, continuously during the experiment to obtain the reaction rate. So we use uh, this very expensive, uh, luxury <laughs> things for the experiment. So for one experiment, it costs, uh, I mean, yeah, $2,000 for one experiment or something. But anyway, this figure showed our experimental result of sulfate reduction rate at high temperature as a function of in situ pH. The yellow and green point represent our experimental data at Europa's pressure condition, which is one order higher than our pressure condition. The black and the uh, black and the white point represent the experimental data obtained at Earth's pressure condition. So, unfortunate to experimentalists, we found that the pressure dependence is very small in this reaction. So, this means that the hydrothermal sulfate reduction would proceed 
on Europa as effective as that, that of ours if other conditions are the same. And we also found a strong pH dependence of the reaction. For example, at pH lower than 6, the sulfate reduction proceeds very effectively. On the other hand, at pH higher than 7, the sulfate reduction rate dramatically decreases and becomes almost zero within the area. So this happens because the conversion of the iron uh, structure in the solution as a function of pH. So this figure shows the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen sulfate and the sulfate yeah, as a function of pH of the solution. The structure of hydrogen sulfate is asymmetry, and thus it is highly reactive. On the other hand, the structure of sulfate is symmetry and much less reactive. So due to the conversion from the reactive hydrogen sulfate to non-reactive sulfate at pH around 6, the sulfate reduction is kinetically inhibited at pH higher than 6. So in other words, in order to remove the sulfate from Europa effectively through sulfate reduction, uh, the hydrothermal fluid pH needs to be less than 6. So acidic hydrothermal system would be required. So in order to achieve such a low pH hydrothermal system, we suggest that Europa's seafloor is covered with basaltic rock rather than unmelted chondritic rocks. So this is because the basalts contain less alkaline or alkaline earth elements. So the fluid context, contacting with the basalt becomes uh, less alkaline. So the presence of al uh, basaltic rock on the surface of Europa further means that the rocky part of this satellite becomes very high temperature in the past. So on, anyway, this right-hand figure shows the, our equilibrium calculation result of fluid pH and fluid composition uh, in the reaction between the basaltic rock with sulfate containing seawater. As the fluid pH is less than 6, the sulfate reduction occurs effectively to produce the sulfide in the fluid. And the major component of the fluid becomes sodium and chlorine. So this sodium and chlorine are uh, uh, dominated in the ocean and possibly appear on the surface in a geologically young region on Europa. So these are consistent with the recent ground-based telescope observation of the geologically young uh, region on the surface of Europa. So we suggest that the hydrothermal sulfate reduction can be one of the things of exogenic sulfate uh, within Europa. So to summarize my second part of, of talk, the, on the surface of Europa, a large amount of oxidants, uh, such as sulfuric acid, are produced by high energy particle irradiation, which is uh, supported by Jupiter's strong magnet sphere. These oxidants are produced and supplied into the ocean, then consumed by the chemical reaction with reductants, which is formed by the active hydrothermal reaction powered by a strong tidal heating uh, due to Jupiter's uh, gravity. So Europa would have received high continuous and high levels of disequilibrium chemical energy due to massive, massive Jupiter. On the other hand, less massive Saturn could produce only limited amount of oxidant to Enceladus. This is a large difference between these icy moons in the long-term evolution. So going back to the uh, two-round fight, <laughs> uh, Europa versus Enceladus. Mm -hmm. In round one, I believe Enceladus wins. Any objection? No? <laughs> OK. So uh, that's a relief. Uh, primitive mo molecules uh, such as ammonia, methane, organic material, alcohol, and aldehyde, cyanide, uh, can survive upon accretion onto Saturn. However, these are converted into CO or N2, more simple uh, molecules, on, upon accretion onto uh, proto Jupiter. So the chemical evolution may have occurred more easily on Enceladus than Europa. And organics, oxidants, and reductants 
produced in the molecular crust by the cosmic ray radiation before the formation of solar system could have been provided in the primitive Enceladus. So this, so you, you should imagine that, that this is just a speculation. So, but uh, this implies that uh, uh, Enceladus could be the best place for emergence of heterogenic uh, biosphere in the solar system using this uh, chemical equilibrium in the building materials. In round two, I believe Europa wins. So Europa would have received a continuous and high levels of this equilibrium energy due to the massive Jupiter through the, the uh, supply of oxidant and reductant into the uh, hydrosphere. So the Europa may be a good place for the emergence of chemo-autotrophic biosphere. So my judge of this fight is draw. So one to one, <laughs> we cannot decide. But if you want to see some evidence of chemical evolution or heterotrophic biosphere, possible heterotrophic biosphere, you should go to answer this. And if you want to see some continuous chemical cycle that could harbor the uh, autotrophic life, you should go to Europa. So in either case, I believe that these two moons could be ideal natural laboratory to test the hypothesis of heterotrophic or autotrophic origin of life through the space mission. So to summarize my talk, the, the, my pri uh, primary question was, what were the key processes for making the diversity of water chemistry or chemosphere in the ocean water in the solar system? So my answer for IC satellite, the mass of the gas giant determined this. The mass of the gas giant determined the initial composition of ice, IC satellite. And also, the mass of the gas giant control the subsequent chemical evolution within the oceans through the, the uh, supply of oxidant and reductant. And I'm very looking forward to seeing the discussion of the emergence of biosphere in this afternoon. Thank you very much. Very nice, thank you. Question. Everybody competes? Is everybody hungry, <laughs> hungry for lunch? No. Um, Mary? <laughs> I was like, get rid of my hand. <laughs> Um, so my question is, because uh, I don't know exactly where the debate is now about the age of Enceladus. Okay. So it, um, your um, supposition about what it might be composed of is supported if it was formed at the same time as Saturn was being formed, as opposed to I know there's some that believe that it was entrained later on from you know a wandering asteroid, which in which case it's younger and and its composition wouldn't be the same. So where is that discussion? Yeah, as you said, that it, it is a still debate, the age of Enceladus, and some people suggest that Enceladus is very young, the formed in the very recent disk from the Saturn, and uh, the result of the Cassini's grand finale uh, strongly supports the very young uh, Saturn disk. So, the probably the Enceladus and other mid-sized satellite in the inner part of the Saturn may be young, but uh, even that case, the the for example, yeah, the Kuiper belt, large Kuiper belt object needs to be encountered to Saturn and uh, produce a disk. So in that scenario, the the materials of the uh, impactor uh, are less heated because the, the, there's no shock or no high temperature uh, phenomena upon the, the spreading into the disk. So I believe that the, the answer does still possess the primordial uh, molecule, even if the answer this age is very young. So you had this nice picture uh, for Europa of, I think it was uh, reductants coming down from the surface and oxidants coming up from the subsurface. And um, since I'm not a planetary scientist, I was wondering if you could connect that to what we expect of the early Earth, because it mm. seemed like, is that upside down from, from what we expect of the Earth atmosphere with the mantle? Mm -hmm. And um, in that case, does that change 
like does that inversion mean there's like something different we would expect about the life that's in that ocean? Yeah, I, I completely agree that the, the some yeah, insights from the Europa could be applicable to Ari or uh, chemical evolution or availability of yeah, this equilibrium energy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, so the sulfur on Europa is coming from Io. Right. Do we know how long that's been happening? I mean, it, it's coming from the, yeah. ultimately from the, the tidal dissipation in Io. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a really good question. And as far as we know, that Io is the heated by the tidal dissipation of Jupiter. And uh, yeah, those, those are a really, I mean, a sustainable uh, process. And uh, the volcanic activity on Io would continue for a long time as comparable to the solar system, but I'm not so, yeah. Well, I guess it hinges on the, it's the Laplacian resonance between the moons, and I don't know if we know how long that's actually been in place. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a, one of the open questions, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dare I? So, um, with Enceladus, these, these aqueous jets, uh, do you feel they're representative of the uh, submantle ocean? And mm -hmm. is it just a matter of better spectroscopy on that 1% organic to you know, answer round one without happening necessarily to create a new mission? Mm, yeah, that's also a very nice question. And uh, I think there should be some bias uh, in the gas phase and the liquid phase, because the gas the gas, is, gas would be gas during the uh, transport near the surface. So the the composition of the Enceladus plume would be biased by the gas phase and the liquid phase separation. However, in the liquid phase, the I think the composition would be representative of the uh, global subsurface ocean. So we have a question from one of our colleagues, Joe Kirschfink. Hi, Joe, if you can see us here. He's probably watching a live stream, right? Um, he asked a question with an exclamation point instead of a question mark. But uh, he says the E-ring of Saturn will continuously put small ice particles that have been irradiated, I believe, not irritated, irradiated while in orbit back onto a Saladus. Yeah. That will oxidize it. Yeah, absolutely right, yeah. Yeah, if the E-ring, the coming back to the surface, yeah, that, that's one of the oxidants. Yeah, thank you, Joe. So round, round two, maybe. Yeah, maybe eco or. <laughs> maybe <laughs> so Enceladus, Enceladus is maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> Any other questions before? Nicholas? All right, so in terms of the energy availability, I wonder how easy is the energy available on Europa? Because my, my instinct is that if the chemical energy available is too easy, in other words, if you don't actually need structure to dissipate it, mm. then you wouldn't necessarily see anything interesting because mm. there would be this very aggressive mechanism dissipating it alongside whatever life could do. But if you have energy that requires a little work to get at, then you might see dissipative structures forming. Mm. So is the kind of chemical energy that you'd expect to be available on Europa is it hard or easy? Uh, it's difficult to answer. Yeah, the, the flux of the oxidant and oxidant into this ocean is totally controlled by the recycling rate of the surface ice, and which are largely unknown. So the, in the future, Europa Creeper mission would provide some yeah, data on the recycling rate on the surface icy class. And uh, yeah, after that, I will be able to answer that question. Thank you. That's great. Idea. So, so we should think about um, getting some lunch here. Thanks again, Yasu. Thank you.